I'm John Buchanan, and in this video, we're going to learn how to hide tracks within a logic project. Now, there are a number of circumstances under which you want to have information available within your logic project, but you don't necessarily want to be able to see it all of the time. And when that happens, the option to be able to hide a track is incredibly useful. And we're going to see it in the context of a little string arrangement project that I've put together here. Firstly, let's just hear the track. Okay, so I'm using um, Apple's Studio uh, Strings instrument here. And you can see that I've arranged the five different voices of the string uh, library or orchestra onto uh, five separate tracks. But what you can also see in the mixer is that I've set up three auxiliaries for groups of effects. At the moment, we're using bus one, which is providing us with some reverb, which is uh, uh, you can hear on the track already. But what I've also done is to set up two slightly more creative effects, one of which is a delay designer treatment, which is on bus number two. Let's just have a listen to that. So this fun sort of filtered set of chases. And then lastly, I've got this kind of retro lo-fi channel, which I've made using a combination of chorus and bit crushing. Now, most of the time that we're working with auxiliaries in this way, it's enough just to have their sends to those effects available. Within the mixer, I can select all of those tracks. I can send them to bus two where the delays are. I can send them to bus three where the lo-fi channel are, uh, is. And I've got a, a chance basically just to sort of say, OK, well, for now, all I need is to be able to set the level that I want to send those channels to the auxiliary effects. But what happens if I suddenly think, well, actually, I want to be able to automate those effects. I want to be able to, for example, control their volume. That delay treatment is really nice, but it's quite dominating. It would be quite nice to be able to say, right, well, I'd like to be able to control the volume of those effects so that they become part of my project. So in other words, what I might decide to do is to make the auxiliary tracks become part of my project so that I'm in a position to draw automation for them. I'll show you what I mean. If I select all three of these tracks, what I can do is I can create a track for them. So having selected all three, I'm going to control click and I'm going to hit create track. And what will then happen is that Logic will add these to the arrange page. Now I can select all three. They, um, they've sort of come in between the first violin and the second violin parts, but I can move them up to the top of my arrangement so that they're just sitting here up at the top. Now, for the moment, I don't really need to be able to see these tracks. They're just taking up space on the screen. They're occupying these three first tracks, and I don't really need them to do that. It might be useful for me to have them so that I can adjust their volume, but for now, while I'm just composing and thinking about ideas, I definitely don't need them to be here. So what I want to be able to do is to hide them so that they're out of the way and they're gone, and then I can unhide them and bring them back into the project when I might need them. So what I'm going to do is to select all three of these tracks. And what I'm then going to do is to come to the track uh, menu up here at the top. And what I'm going to do is to hide these tracks. Now, the moment I do that, they disappear. They're gone from the project. And where they are is hiding behind this H button, which is the shortcut for hide. And in fact, I can press H on my keyboard to toggle open and closed hidden tracks. So what's the advantage of this? Well, when, I'm, when these tracks are hidden, straight away, I can just work on the tracks that are active within my track. But when I want to start automating them, the huge advantage here is that when I unhide them, I can now think about automating um, these effects. So let's just come back into the mixer for a moment, which I'm going to do by pressing X. 
Now, straight away, what I can see is that here are my five string parts. And at the moment, I'm sending a certain amount to bus one, which is the uh, reverb. I'm sending quite a lot to the uh, lo-fi channel, which is on bus three. And what I'm also going to do is I'm just going to turn up the sends for bus number two. And because all five tracks are selected here by simply turning up one of these send dials, they all turn up by the same amount. Fine. So now what I know is that all of these tracks are sending to all three effects. But as we've already established, the delay designer treatment is a little bit um, hot at the moment. The level is too uh, loud. So what I'm going to do is to automate the delay designer channel. I'm going to press A for automation. And what I'm in a position to do then is to firstly turn down the volume of this effect overall. I'm going to turn it down sort of six decibels or so. But what I'm also going to do is to just draw a little bit of volume um, automation here so that at the beginning, there's almost none of this effect. It's then going to sort of ramp up a little bit to the sort of apex of the track. And then I'm going to make sure that the effect has been switched off within a bar of it ending. So what I've now got is some automated volume for that delay designer treatment. And what we could also do would be to automate the volume of our retro style channel as well. Again, I want this to sort of peak right at the end of the track. I'm going to turn down the level up to that point so that basically the last couple of bars of the track are sort of creating a slightly different um, spatial set of effects um, compared to the opening section of it. So let's have a listen to the track now with these automated effects in place. So what I've now got is my effects managed much better. That delay treatment isn't really getting in the way in the way that it was before. So if I come out of automation by pressing A again to close that down, all of that's fine. But really, I've just got the beginnings of a track here. I've got some strings and I might now want to add other things, some beats, some basses, some synths, all kinds of other things. So really what I want to do now is to hide these auxiliary channels again so that they're out of the way and they're not taking up all of this screen space. So I can press H again, either by pressing this button up here at the top or using my key command, and those tracks are now hidden. That doesn't mean that they're not working anymore or I've switched them off. They're still going to do what they were doing before with all of that lovely automation. And if I need to come back in and make changes to those tracks again, once again, I can just press H to hide or unhide those tracks. Let's just check they're working with the tracks hidden. And sure enough, they are. And again, remember H to unhide them and A to go back in and see the automation data if you want to make changes. So within this video, we've begun to understand how hidden tracks can be useful. We've looked at this in the context of adding auxiliary effect tracks to your main page within Logic so that you can draw automation data, but then you can then hide those tracks so they're not taking up lots of screen space. But there are other ways in which hidden tracks can be really useful as well. Let's suppose you start writing a song or a piece of music with a little sort of sketched musical example, which is kind of sitting on an instrument and then suddenly it take, makes more sense to take that little improvisation and to use it on other instruments instead. You might want to take that first track and hide it. You don't want to throw it away altogether because it might contain some really good ideas that you want to use later on. But it's also taking up space on the screen and hiding it just so it's there when you need it, but out of the way when you don't is a really useful way of just freeing up some screen space for the ideas that you're really working on at any given moment in time.